Hello everyone, hopefully you can all hear me all right and see me and welcome to our virtual tour of Suderley Castle live from. So uh, if you've not met me before, my name is Ginny and I'm a community archaeologist with Dig Ventures. If you have met me before, you might notice we're doing things slightly differently today. So normally I'm uh, hosting from the office, so I'm on my laptop, but today I'm out in the field. So we're going to do a full walk around today. I've got a glamorous assistant to help me out and share some screens for me, but we're going to try something a little bit new. So welcome to Sudley Castle. If you've not seen it before, I'll flip my screen and you can see it. it's looking absolutely lovely in front of me. You'll notice that I'm not quite at the dig yet. And that's because we were thinking with it being our last year, the best to do would be to do a lovely walk around of the gardens and follow the same route that our archeologists do every day. Talk about the history, the dig, when did we start, what are we looking for, why are we here, all those fun things before we get into the trenches. But before we get going, we'll do a little bit of housekeeping. So if my glamorous assistant could just share the screen for me, I'll run us through a little bit of a uh, outline for today and also just some of our house rules before we get started. First and always very important, do remember to keep it friendly and be nice to everyone. Feel free to use the chat and the Q&A today if you'd like to submit any comments or questions. As always, we love to hear from you, but do make sure that you're being nice to each other, that we're being kind and sensible as well. If you do find the chat distracting, that's absolutely fine. If you'd like to turn off the uh, panel, close the notifications um, and just focus on the video, that is absolutely fine by us. And last but not least, and I think very important today, considering I'm out in the field, um, do be patient with us in the event that anything does go slightly wrong. If my signal drops, if my microphone falls off, anything like that, um, give us a couple of seconds and we'll fix that ASAP. But moving on to what we'll be doing today. So as I said, we're going to start um, with a nice introduction to site, to history, to the garden, all of that before we move on to our proper archaeology tour behind me here and then as always we'll have a q a at the end so if you have any questions about the dig what we found what's coming next about the studley anything at all do feel free to drop those in the chat or the q a and then at the end we'll just summarize what's coming next um, so my glamorous assistant feel free you can stop sharing our screen now and before we get going, I just want to finish my intro by saying a big thank you to all of our crowd funders for making this event possible. These guys have funded the dig. They've made all of this possible behind me and all of this possible here today. So a massive thank you to all of you for that. Lovely. So we'll get going on a nice little garden tour here. So I'll just flip my camera so you can appreciate the views in front of me. And let's talk a little bit about Sudley. So Sudley has been occupied for a really, really long time. Um, we know that people have been living here on this spot exactly since the Anglo-Saxon period. And we know that because we have documentary evidence uh, that Ethelred the Unready gifted a site here, a house here at Sudley to his daughter Godda on her wedding day. So we know that for a long, long time, people have been living on this spot. The house that we can see in front of us isn't the original house. Um, this one was built a bit later, um, but we can assume that probably the buildings that were here before lie somewhere underneath here, though we're not exactly sure where they are today. Um, but Sudley has a very turbulent history after this. It survives through a lot of different periods. It sees some of the most famous happenings and people of English history. So our first kind of conflict that we see at Sudley, of course, is the anarchy. So if there's anyone out there who's a fan of House of the Dragon or Game of Thrones, any shows like that, anyone who's seen um, those sorts of things will have a bit of an idea about the history of the anarchy. But essentially, it's sort of a, a battle for the throne between Stephen and Matilda, two cousins. Um, and so the people who lived here in this house, they supported Matilda um, and Stephen eventually comes uh, and he takes back the house here. And after that, it does fall in and out of many different hands. Very topically, you'll see we're coming up to here 
a lovely banqueting hall, which now lies in ruins. It's just hidden slightly behind these trees. We'll take a wander over, but this is the work of Richard III. Um, so he commissioned this banqueting hall. He had this built. Um, unfortunately, now it does lie in ruins. But if we just come up to it here, a beautiful day today, isn't it? Um, you'll be able to see just how lovely it is. And that front there with all those windows is designed to look out over the gardens and to see all those beautiful sort of flower beds and pathways and fountains that we sort of passed through just a second ago there. So here we are. This is Richard III's banqueting hall. And you can see behind us, we have the tower there in ruins also at the top. And then we go through. And over here is the wing where the family still live today. Uh, it's still, it's been a sort of rebuilt over the years. So we'll come on to in a moment why Sudley is in ruins. But what we're really, really interested in is the Tudor period at Sudley. So we know that Sudley uh, fell into the Tudor family. It was gifted to Jasper Tudor by Henry VII, father of Henry VIII. Um, and we know that Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn came and they summered here. They spent some time here. We also know that while they were here, Henry met up with Thomas Cromwell in Winchcombe Abbey, a place that's going to be very important to us later on. And while they were there, they discussed the dissolution of the monasteries. Probably could have chosen a better venue, but here we are. Um, so we have a lot of Tudors visiting here. After this, um, Thomas Seymour becomes the owner of Sudley Castle. If you like your Tudors, you'll probably have heard of the Seymours. And very importantly, as we're coming up to this church here, this church is uh, now the burial place of someone who is very important to Thomas Seymour and very important to Henry VIII as well. It was uh, Catherine Parr. So if you know the song, Henry VIII and his wives, the one who survived, and now she is buried here in this church in Sudley Castle. And that's because she ended up marrying Thomas Seymour. And he's very, very relevant to us and our garden because we've been finding some of their stories, some of their romance as we've been going. So you can see this beautiful church. We've got Richard III here and Queen Victoria, uh, both commemorated during the Victorian renovations. Um, but as I said, Thomas Seymour and Catherine Parr were the residents of this castle. And we've actually found some stuff over the years that explains a bit more of their story. So if you tuned in to some of our virtual tours a few years ago, you'll have seen that we found some lovely stone a few years ago uh, that was used probably for some garden renovations, for extending the garden beyond where it was. And we think that that stone was taken from Winchcombe Abbey by Thomas Seymour after its destruction and used to do up the garden there. And we know this because the stone has a really typical ecclesiastical design on it, very, very typical um, of designs used in these big monasteries and these big abbeys like Winchcombe. Apologies if you can hear the uh, lawn mowers out there. Um, and so we know that he's taken the stone, and he's done up this garden. And when we combine that with historical documents, which tell us that he did a lot of refurbishments ahead of Catherine's arrival, we can see that this was probably part of those refurbishments, um, which is really, really interesting. So if we continue down the history of Sudley, um, after Thomas Seymour and Catherine Parr, the next sort of interesting event in our story, which is relevant to our archaeology, uh, is the arrival of Elizabeth I to this site, so Queen Elizabeth I. So she came along and visited Sudley uh, to celebrate the four year anniversary of her victory over the Spanish Armada. And when she came to Sudley, the man who was living here at the time, Third Lord Chandos, he decided uh, to do up the gardens. He threw a big party with banqueting and feasting um, to celebrate with her, to celebrate that victory. Unfortunately for him, it did rain the whole time. <laughs> Very classic English weather. Unfortunately, you can plan everything but the weather. Um, and so Elizabeth, I don't think, had the best time 
and unfortunately he wasn't invited back to court. But this isn't the last chapter in Sudley's history. So as we come slightly closer to the dig, to our garden, and as I explain a bit more about what we're looking for, um, I'll explain what happened to Sudley, why it's in ruins, and why that's important for us archaeologists today. So during the Civil War, this was used as a royalist base by Charles I. Unfortunately, when Parliament took over, they decided that in order to prevent it being used like that again, they would slight the castle, so destroy it. Um, and that is why most of Sudley lies in ruins today, um, such as the Banqueting Hall and the tower that we saw. And that is why we have the remains of a Tudor garden on the grounds of Sudley Castle. And that is what we're interested in as archaeologists. So some LIDAR was done and some aerial images were taken in the modern day. And we could see the remains of this Tudor garden that had been left in situ. It hadn't been torn out or changed because the castle had been in ruins during uh, after the Civil War. And we want to find out what's in that garden, the layout, what's been planted, what kind of things were happening there, any activities, any evidence for that. And that is our main mission on this dig. And as I said, we've been coming here for a bit. This year is our final year of Sudley Castle. This is our last chance to answer any of those lingering questions about the garden at Sudley Castle. So we're going to wander up. We've covered a little bit of the context, a little bit of the history, and we're going to, we've looped back around to the church. So we're going to follow the exact same route that our team of archaeologists and crowdfunders take every single morning to get to the dig. So we're passing back past this church and over towards the dig. Um, so this year, we've opened up three trenches three very large trenches, much larger than we've done before. Um, and they're based on a couple of things. Uh, they're based on LIDAR results and on some geophysics results that our crowdfunders collected last year. Um, and we're looking for things in the garden like features, uh, pathways, uh, plant beds, flower beds, water features, all these things that make up your Tudor garden. And uh, we're trying to find out what they look like, how big were they? When were they built? Um, and where do they sit in the layout of our garden? So we're going to start heading behind the scenes here, through the secret garden, and round here. So there is still a little bit of uh, lawns being mowed down here, so I'm just going to mute. Apologies for the noise. Here we go. So hopefully it's not so loud now. But down we go. So this is our route to the dig that we take every single day. And uh, let's go have a look and see what everyone's doing. This is week two of our dig. We're coming to a close now. Um, we finish up officially on Sunday. So we have a little bit more digging to do. But it does mean that, luckily for you guys, our trenches are nice and busy. We've got lots going on. So here we are at site. So you can see we're on the other side of that ha ha now that we started behind. And if you look out, you can see just how huge this garden would have been. So this is our Tudor garden, which is lying in situ that we've been so excited to find out more about. We've done a few years of digging here in the past. We've dug up here and over here and down here as well. So we've explored quite a lot of the garden, but as you can see this year, we're coming a bit closer to the ha-ha now. So I'm going to start over here in this trench, which is pretty much wrapped up. It's recorded and uh, ready to be filled back in again in a few days' time. As we come through under the lovely canopy of trees, you might perhaps think that there's not too much going on in this trench. 
if you have a look at it. But this is the nature of garden archaeology. So we have some very exciting trenches, some very visually impactful trenches. And then some trenches like this, which are a little bit ephemeral, but nonetheless still very interesting. So this trench is where our dig camp have been working a fair bit to clean up and record in here and our dig club as well. And what we have in here is a sort of a garden pathway. We have a feature in here which runs directly down here. Very ephemeral, but it does line up um, with our geophysics results and with the topography in this field here. We do see a lot of lumps and bumps. So in this trench over the past few weeks, we found pottery, medieval pottery, we found nails, we found animal bone, we found all sorts of little bits of evidence of our garden here. But as I said, this trench is now wrapped up um, and we've moved on to our other trenches um, and we've been having a look in there. I'm going to save the deepest trench for last. But if we wander over to Freddy's trench down here, we'll have a chat with him about what's been happening in his trenches. And we'll have a look at what the guys are doing today. Um, we'll see if they found anything interesting. This trench is also coming towards the end now. We're wrapping this one up too. We're getting ready to say goodbye. But you can see that we're working very hard in here today to record what we've done over the past few weeks. So we're just going to come in here like a fly on the wall. <laughs> and we're going to observe what these guys are doing. So we've got David and Stroma and Freddie in here. Freddie's Hello. giving us a nice wave. Hi guys. So we're just working hard to record this trench here. So Freddie, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you found in here? Yes, so you can see that we're standing a little bit lower uh, than the rest of the kind of mound here. And this is mound is very similar to one that we dug last year. It's just over there. Um, and so we were thinking that it might be contemporary. So what we did, we dug a slot through it. And now we're drawing a section so we can see of it. And it looks, uh, Ben's told me, because Ben did it last year, that it looks almost exactly the same as the mound that we did last year, which does suggest that it is contemporary, uh, which is great. And also, what we didn't expect to find, is the bottom here, we dug half of it out. This is a tree throw, so where a tree used to be. But this was located under the mound. So this indicates potentially an earlier phase of the garden. And this, potent this mound essentially is where Thomas Seymour, when he did the, the renovations, and put this in over uh, the older existing layout of the garden. Exciting. So we're seeing more of that story from Thomas Seymour. So if anyone missed any of that there, if it was a little bit fuzzy on the sound, uh, these guys have been working hard and uncovering this mound here, which seems to be contemporary, very, very similar to a mound that we found last year. But within it, we found this tree throw, which makes us think that this mound has been put in by Thomas Seymour a little bit later in the life of the garden. So we're seeing more of those renovations, these changes that have happened in the garden here. And these mounds would be used as sort of viewing platforms. They're placed really advantageously in the landscape so that you can see the lovely stretch of garden that would have spread under the entirety of Hopfield here, right all the way to the end that you can see there. So you can see these guys are working really hard just to wrap up those findings, to make a record of them. Archaeology by nature, it's a very destructive process. So we want to make sure that everything we do, we're recording so that we don't lose any of that valuable information. And so those records are available um, for future archaeologists to observe and admire as well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to wander over to Ben's Trench. So Ben's Trench has been very busy this year. Um, we actually think this trench stretches over what would have been a water feature, uh, a very lovely water feature, which we did sort of partially uncover in previous years. Um, and it's made up 
of a mound, another mound, a viewing platform, which has a lovely view of the garden. And this mound would have acted as a sort of island around which there would have been this water, this channel, we believe. So it would have been a very beautiful, very large feature. Um, so we'll have a look at it here. So you can see here, right here behind where these guys are standing is where our mound, our island would have been. And we've done this trench to try and have a look at these channels, this water feature that would have surrounded it. But what's interesting is that in the Victorian times, they've cut it in half with this ha-ha here. Ha-ha is to keep animals out of your garden so no deer or sheep or anything can get into your garden without damaging your view. So from the other side, there's an illusion. You can't tell that there's this dip here. It looks like it just continues on. But we'll head up and we'll stand up on this mound, first of all, just to have a look and picture what this might have looked like back in the day. So here we are, you can see an amazing view of the garden out here. <laughs> These guys, do you want to wave? Hello, we'll come over and chat to you guys in a sec. Um, but you can see around us here, we've got this dip, this channel that runs all the way around. And we've targeted some slots here to really see what's going on in there. So we'll start, I think, with the most visually exciting one, which is Ben's and Richard's here that they're working on. Can you see how deep this is? Ben's not even at the bottom here, and he's already mostly covered. How deep is it, Ben? It's so deep. Deep in it. It's a massive big hole. Massive big hole. Oh, yeah. uh, we finally reached the bottom. So we'll come up this way as well and have another sort of look. We'll crouch down and see look how far down Ben is there. <laughs> when people are in this, you can't even see them from the other side. We've got this safety step here to make sure that we're not falling over. Um, but Ben, I wonder if you could maybe tell us a little bit uh, about this, this ditch, what it is, our water feature, what yeah. we found. You can do that, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we are, well, I am currently stood in the middle of our Tudor Gardens main central water feature. Um, it's really, really big. Do you see that we've got um, where Steph has stood over there? That's the southern edge. I'm stood right in the middle here. And where everyone is digging behind you is the northern edge of it. So it's quite long and it's also quite deep, as you can see. Um, just behind you, where Richard and Jeanette are stood, is sort of a mound. Uh, that's just behind this pond, this water feature. We reckon that's possibly a viewing platform, maybe where they would have come up to the centre point of the garden, um, surrounded by this watery pond or ditch, and then looking out beyond into the, the lovely landscape of the garden, appreciating the trees and the flowers and all that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, this is what we reckon we've got in here. And the reason we're digging it out is we want to find exactly how old it is, try and get some datable finds, such as pottery out, uh, which we have had. We also had a clay tobacco pipe bowl out of the bottom of here as well, which is, we think, quite early. It's quite a small one. And the smaller they are, the earlier they are, usually. Um, so we're going to get all of those finds sent off to specialists to tell us how old they are to give us a clue of when in the lifetime of this formal garden that this pond was dug. Um, and give us just piece together some more clues to its history. So yeah, that's what's going on in here. Thank you, Ben. No problem. So we have some of those finds by the edge of the trench that we can have a look at. But for now, we'll have a look at some of our other ditches that are being dug out here. <laughs> So you can see down here, we have a lovely team working really hard. Hi, Red. <laughs> and we've got some lovely stratigraphy in the back there. I don't know if you guys can see that. So one thing about archaeologists, we love layers. 
um, and we love to see those layers in the soil. Um, so it's really nice to see as we dig down, we get some really clear layers that will help us determine some of the chronology. And down here, you can see we have some lovely finds that have come out of this trench. So we have some oyster shells there, a little bit of animal bone, pottery. There's a small piece of charcoal there, some glass, iron nails, some ceramic, perhaps building material. And here we have this mysterious thing as well that's just come out today. Uh, some of you might have seen on our timeline, we had another one just like that the other day. I won't give any spoilers because I think we're going to do an archaeology guessing game about that one. So I don't want to give anything away, but that's quite an interesting find that we found. And you can see these guys have been working really, really hard, just continuing to bring that down in our last sort of few days of digging. Hello. So we'll head over and we'll see our final sort of ditch in here as well. Um, I'll just wander up this way. Um, we can see down here, we've got another one. I'll swoop around the side so we can have a proper look. This one's getting really deep as well. Yeah, and this one's just getting exciting. Oh, tell us what's been happening. So in the last hour or so, I don't know if you can see these big blocks of stone. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've just come onto these and some of them, I don't know if you can point out down there, are shaped. We've got a nice shaped stone there. Uh, we've got tool marks going across it. And we've got these really big blocks. So this could be really exciting for us if it turns out to be similar date to the Winch Kamabi stone that we found in the garden wall in previous years. Uh, that would then help to tie us in uh, with when this was constructed at a similar time to perhaps that guard wall. That's really exciting. Absolutely. Actually. So mm, this is news to me as well. I didn't know these. Well, it's big. only just happened really in the last hour or so. <laughs> That's amazing. Absolutely. So keep going, guys. Find some more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Ben. So there you go. All the new developments happening on site. That is really, really exciting today. So what we've got as well, I've pulled out some of our finds um, to show you. A few that are cleaned already, so we can have a good look at those. And a few that aren't cleaned, that are brand new. Um, including that clay pipe that Ben mentioned. So when we've got anyone watching who knows quite a lot about clay pipes, this is your time to shine. So here we are down here let me just flip my screen so here are some lovely clean finds so this is the sort of thing that we saw in our finds tray but we can see these nice and clean now um, and we can really appreciate what they look like so I'll just pull this over I'll start with this one here Got a lovely piece of pottery here you guys will see that Really, really nice. Some more sort of post post medieval pottery here. This lovely decoration of it. Some more of these shells. And what I'm really, really excited by and I find really interesting is this. So um, some of the stuff that we're finding is a bit later. It is Victorian. So the Victorians would have re-landscaped this field a little bit. Um, they might perhaps have filled in that fountain feature if they didn't want it. So we're finding a lot of Victorian rubbish in here, but one man's trash is another man's treasure. And that's very much true in archaeology. Um, so one thing we have here is this lovely sort of medicine bottle. And you can see there's this residue in it here of whatever might have been in there back in the day, which might possibly have been lead, which I would definitely would not recommend drinking. It is not good for you, but uh, the Victorians did used to drink it as a medicinal sort of concoction um obviously we know now that it would not help you <laughs> it would probably make things worse um, but it's still really interesting to see evidence of that victorian sort of medicine and over here 
I brought this tray over specifically to show you guys this lovely clay pipe here that Richard found the other day. So you can see we have the bowl still intact. We don't have the stem, but you might be able to see on the bottom, we've got a little stamp on there. So this is going to be really key in helping us identify this, to date this. Um, and because of where it's found, it has the potential to tell us a lot about that future. So we're really, really excited about this find. Um, I think by looking at it so far, it could be 17th century, so 1600s perhaps. Um, but we'll have a proper look and see if we can get an exact date on that one. So there's been some really interesting bits coming out. Um, this site isn't as fine as heavy as some of our other sites, with it being garden archaeology. But all these little finds that come out are really useful in helping us sort of work out the chronology of this garden, the different phases of this garden. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm really, really excited by that stone that we've just been told has come out. That is news to me. Uh, and that's pretty major. So you'll have to uh, keep an eye out on the website to see what changes come along with that, uh, what else we might find. Um, so that is really, really interesting. And with that, I think we're about ready for a bit of a Q&A. Let me see what time we're on. So we've got about 10 minutes now where we can answer some questions about Seedley Castle, uh, about the dig, about what we've been finding. If anyone would like to see anything again on site, do give us a shout. Um, I don't think anyone's submitted anything so far, but do just drop them in and we can go over those for you guys. Got a nice view of Zoodly behind me here. Yeah, so as I mentioned, um, just while I wait for some questions to roll in, we've only got a few more days left here now um, and we'll wrap up on Sunday. So this is where it's always the nature of archeology, span the best things come out on the last few days. So keep an eye out to see what uh, might emerge in that time. Um, and then we'll be wrapping up Zoodly and wrapping up our dig season for 2023. This is our last site of the year. So it's quite a momentous one in a couple of ways. Um, I've seen we've got a question coming in now. Ah, Doug has asked what was written on the bottle. Um, let me grab that for you again, Doug. So this is our bottle here. And on it, it says Pierce and Co, London and Bristol. Um, so if anyone knows anything about glass bottles, you might actually be able to track that down and find out a little bit more about this bottle, where it might have come from, who might have made it, which will be really interesting. So yeah, Pierce and Co, P-E-A-R-C-E, -E, um, Bristol and London. Was that? No, sorry, London and Gloucester. London, Bristol. See, I've forgotten already. London and Bristol, that was it. So yeah, that's really interesting, um, really useful. We'll be able to track that down exactly. Um, let me see what other Q&A question we've got. Vlada has asked, uh, what would be the main challenges with this dig? That's an interesting question, actually. Um, I don't know if there's particularly been anything that's majorly challenging with this dig. I think the one thing with garden archaeology that is the biggest challenge is trying to find some of that datable evidence. As I said, we don't find as much in terms of finds on garden archaeology digs like this. Um, and sometimes it's the finds that can really give you those big clues in terms of dating. So while it's really wonderful to find these features, it can be a little bit harder to pin down the chronology without any finds to sort of tie into those. Um, but we do what we can. But Sudley, I think this site is actually quite a good site um, in terms of both things, really. It's really fantastic. One thing that is a really big advantage on the site, which has been very topical these past few weeks, is uh, because it's garden site, it's been built to be well draining. All this soil has been put in place to make sure the site drains nice and easily. That has been a huge help <laughs> with the storm that has uh, passed through the UK last week. So thankfully for us, we didn't have to call off digging at any point. We could keep going 
the soils dried out pretty easily, pretty quickly. So that's been a huge help. So um, while there are some challenges to Seedley, I do think it's a really great site to dig. And it's been very, very helpful for us in this turbulent weather. Do we have any more questions? Anything anyone else would like to ask or add? Who lived at the property during the 17th and 18th centuries? Good question. So um, after the castle was slighted uh, during the Civil War, um, it was no longer a residence. People didn't live here. Um, well, I say this. Uh, there was uh, a time where the house was used as sort of an inn or a pub. And I believe as well, there was a period of time where it was used as a farmhouse, um, but the property was mostly in ruins. It wasn't until the 19th century that the Dent family uh, bought this property and turned it back into a family home. Um, and they're still living here today. And we do see some evidence of what they've been getting up to over the years in this garden. As I said, we've seen a lot of the Victorian stuff in there that would come from uh, the re-landscaping um, we've seen evidence of Emma Dent. I'll show you where about, Ooh, here we are, um, just up here where you can see this collection of trees in this area. We dug there a couple of years ago and we ran across uh, someone else's trenches, another archaeologist, Emma Dent, who was the resident here in the Victorian times. She was a very keen antiquarian. Um, and she dug in here. I think she dug in some sites around here, some fields, uncovered some Roman archaeology as well. Um, so we've seen some evidence of her and we've seen evidence of sort of clay pigeon and other things um, that might relate to what the Dent family were getting up here, up to here um, while they were living here. So that's really cool to see, really exciting. But as far as I know, no sort of official residence between the sliding and the Dent family. Uh, but if you do want to find out more about the history of Sudley, they have some great resources on their website. Um, so you can have a look into that. Um, are the LIDAR images available? Absolutely, yes. Um, what I'll do, I'll pop some on the timeline for you guys. But yes, our LIDAR images are available. They're in our reports. And you can really, really get an impression of what the garden would look like. Um, while the topography is somewhat visible um, from the ground here, when you look at that LIDAR, you can really see sort of the shapes emerging. You can see those features, those water fountains, other things like that. So it's really incredible. Um, so yes, I will pop those on the timeline for you guys, but also they're available on our website, digventures.com. If you head to our reports page under projects, you'll be able to spot them all there. Are there any more questions? Anything anyone would like to know before we wrap up? anything at all let me check what time we're on see how much longer we've got a couple of minutes no questions no worries guys so yeah i will say um again just a massive thank you to all of our crowd funders everyone who's joined us on person and in line online to uh dig at sudley castle uh, throughout the years. Um, it's been a really amazing site. It's been really fantastic. One of my first sites at Dig Ventures. Um, and I think we're going to miss it a whole heap. But next year, we will have some new sites on the go. We'll be uh, exploring some new areas, seeing some new things. And uh, we might even have some more Tudor archaeology available for you all. So if you are interested in joining us next year on another site, please do feel free to head to digventures.com if you haven't already um, and sign up for that mailing list. We'll be releasing our dates for 2024 in the coming month. Um, so you'll be able to join us, whether it's in person or online. And of course, we've got lots of other archaeology on there. We've got courses, blogs, videos, all sorts of things for you to explore. If you haven't uh, joined us already, do feel free to do so. And of course, follow us on social media as well. Uh, one more question. Are we allowed to visit the dig? Yes, absolutely. You're allowed to visit the dig. As you can see, we have some visitors on the Ha Ha now. Um, we do a tour daily at 12 o'clock on the Ha Ha. Um, but if you are going to visit us, we are only here today and tomorrow. 
and then the trenches will be closed up. Are we coming to Leicestershire? Not that I know of at the moment, um, but we might have sites sort of close by. Do sort of check out our calendar as it comes up and things are always changing. So who can say what projects what might emerge next year? Um, if you join our mailing list, you'll be able to stay up to date if we come to your local area. So you can see there, we've got a link to the dig timeline. So you can see everything that we've been up to as it comes out the trench, uh, we'll keep you up to date. As I mentioned, we've got our website there um, where you can check out how to join us in 2024. And you can also uh, see some more archeology span content. And of course, follow us on social media um, to get all those fun updates as well of what we've been doing, all the highlights and all the hits from our site. Thank you to everyone for joining us today. Um, you've been a great audience. I hope you enjoyed our sort of stroll through the gardens. Um, and thank you again once more to all our crowdfunders for supporting the dig and making all of this possible in the first place. Um, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your Fridays. And if anyone has any questions or anything after the video, do feel free to drop us a message by email and we'd be very happy to get back to you. But have a lovely day and thank you so much for coming. And I'm sure I'll see you all soon for another tour. Bye, everyone.